tonight on Access TV. It's Gotham Comedy, live. Get ready to laugh with Jamie Lisso, St. Ab Johnson, John Huck, Mike Yard. This week's host, John Caparulo. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, John Caparulo! Yeah! Fuck yeah, huh? Gotham Comedy Live in New York. This place fucking scares me. I, um, it is. This place, I mean, I've lived in L.A. I'm from Ohio, which you can... <laughs> shut up, that's not a joke. <laughs> that's real shit, all right? Um... But I mean, I, yeah, I, uh, I'm, I've lived in L.A. for 15 years. This place is different. I can't figure out cabs. Why do they need me to tell them where to fucking go? I, I mean, they should know their city by now. I mean, I was here for Thanksgiving just a couple years ago. I got in a cab, and I'm like, I get in. I'm like, MetLife Stadium. He goes, you got cross streaks? I'm like, yeah, MetLife Stadium, and... MetLife Stadium's fucking parking lot? I mean, what? I, <laughs> if I got in a cab and said, I mean, can you take me to Grandma's house? I could understand you, but... <laughs> Dick. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's, I, uh, yeah, I, uh, I went to, there was at the butt fumble game. That's, um, that's it, yeah. <laughs> that's a pelt on my wall, huh? That's, that's impressive. Some people saw the immaculate reception. I was there for the fucking butt fumble. I, um... <laughs> But uh, it's, I like football. I'm a football fan. I got to go to the Super Bowl a couple times. That was cool. I didn't play. <laughs> I, didn't get to, I didn't get to dress for the game, but uh, I got to go to Super Bowl 45 and 46. It was cool to You know, it's cool to go to the Super Bowl because then I don't have to go to a Super Bowl party. Because, I mean, you can't watch a Super Bowl at your house by yourself. People have a fucking intervention for you, so... <laughs> You gotta go to a Super Bowl party, and inevitably there's people at the Super Bowl party who don't watch football, and they're gonna, they're gonna fucking talk. <laughs> what does first down mean? Oh, it means there's another TV upstairs. <laughs> right, I mean, it's, it's the biggest game all year. I'm gonna need you to shut the fuck up for about four hours. <laughs> See, I don't need all the pageantry when I go to a Super Bowl. Like, I don't need all the, you know, I mean. I'm a football, I don't need all this stuff. Like you get to the Super Bowl, they have a seat cushion with a pouch and tools. It's got instructions. It's like during the halftime show when Madonna sings Lucky Star, pull out your glow stick and wave it to and fro. <laughs> like, or Madonna could go fuck herself. I, I mean, there's that option too, I'm just saying. I went, I went to the, when I first, the first time I went to the Super Bowl 45 was the uh, Steelers and Cardinals, I, um, yeah, I went, I, <laughs> fucking relax. I, um, no, I went, my buddy's a Steeler fan, so we went, uh, we bet on the game. $200 bet, my friend decided to be a dick because he lost, pay me off in all $2 bills. Imagine the commitment it takes to be that much of a dick, I mean. I mean, you gotta, I mean, you, you can't go to the ATM for that. I mean, you gotta go to the bank, stand in line, go up to the teller. Yeah, I need a hundred twos. Uh, I mean, teller's probably like, you're just being a dick to somebody, aren't you? <laughs> so I gotta spend a hundred twos. That's not easy either. I mean, because everywhere I go, I gotta pay with fucking twos. <laughs> Every cashier is like, that's a $2 bill. I'm like, oh, this is the guy who fucking gave it to you. I know. Just... <laughs> One cashier actually did the light test on him. Just... <laughs> like I'm counterfeiting fucking twos. Really? I mean... <laughs> yeah, twos and second Jawea coins. I like to have really, really conspicuous counterfeit money, lady. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm married now, somehow. I, um, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I, I like, I like being married. Some dudes are just not real supportive. <laughs> like, one of my best friends, we got engaged, he's like, oh, have fun having sex with the same woman every night for the rest of your life. I'm like, well, that would improve my numbers. So, I mean, thank you. <laughs> I can see it. <laughs> I can see a 
know it's a sacrifice for some guys. I mean, with your lifestyle, your sex life. For me, not so much. You know, it's, uh, there's this long line of pussy outside my door. And, like, uh, you're all gonna have to go home now. I'm sorry. I, the position's been filled. It's pretty much a productive move for me. I mean, but uh, yeah, we. Uh, we got married, we've been married two years. She, was, she wants to have kids, I guess we're trying. I'm just doing the same shit, really. I uh, <laughs> didn't really adjust my swing on that at all. I, uh, <laughs> less clean up now, I guess is uh, <laughs> too far. But I, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we're, I just, I don't know, at this point, I'm like, I'm still just getting used to her. We're both dog people, that's good. I mean, I'm trying to convince her, like, hey, dogs are kind of cool, too, you know? And by the time they get to be teenagers, they fucking die. I mean, there's, there's that. <laughs> we, uh, but yeah, we, uh, I couldn't imagine being with somebody who doesn't like dogs. Like, I went out with this girl a few years ago. I didn't know she didn't like dogs, so she came over. She's horrified. Ew! You let your dog lick your face? I'm like, yeah, I, I know him. <laughs> it's not gonna go any further than this. I mean, it... <laughs> but he licks his butt. Well, not recently. I mean, it's kind of like, it's kind of like the five second rule. Like, I don't, I don't let him go straight from his mud hole to my face. I, 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 Catch him licking his butt, like, oh, hey, when you're done there, hook me up immediately. <laughs> I like dogs, I, and she's, uh, she really wants to have kids. She started putting clothes on the dogs. <laughs> it's not so much that they look ridiculous. Like, I mean, I get home, they're wearing sweaters, and one of them's got a hoodie. I don't know why he has a hoodie. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's now that I pet, now when I pet my dog, I gotta feel like a fucking pervert. Though. I mean, come here, Barney. Who's a good boy? You're a good boy. Let, let me get up your shirt a little bit, there, Barney. Huh? Yeah, relax. Barney's a good boy because he's not gonna fucking tell anybody about this shit. Is he? <laughs> I like, it, she's, it's being married is different. There's now, you know, she's uh, she tries to get me to eat healthier. She, she shops at Whole Foods, it's fucking hippie. <laughs> I've been there once, I, I, myself, I did like three laps with an empty basket and left. I was mad, I'm like, how are you people still in business? I mean, it's like, this lady's like, can I help you find something? I'm like, yes, yeah, something I'd fucking recognize. It would be fantastic, yeah. Where, where's your Oreos aisle? Do you have that? I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, like the, I like the regular grocery store, the normal, you know, the one that's just, it's got big signs and just comfort food and it's killing me. You know, I, uh, but <laughs> I, I hate, you know what, the one thing I hate at the grocery store now, it still is the, uh, do you get that where they, where you're right as you're about to pay, and would you like to donate a dollar to help fight muscular dystrophy today? No, I'd much rather look like an asshole in front of everybody else in line right now, actually. I'd rather leave the store as everyone glares at me like, what a cheap son of a bitch he was. What's his problem? I want everybody thinking I like muscular dystrophy. That's what I want, son of a bitch. Can you break a two, motherfucker? Because I hate, I hate this whole... <laughs> You guys ready for some fun tonight, huh? Come on. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Jamie Lisso is taking the stage when we return. TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right, you guys. Your first comedian. Your first comedian tonight. Great comic. I've known him for years. He's been on a Tonight Show with, with Jay Leno. Let him hear it. Jamie Lisso. Thank you guys so much, man. This is, uh, thanks everybody for coming. If you guys hadn't come, this would be fucking weird. Uh, I love this club, man. It's got such a great, a great view. Um, 
I hope this goes well because it's live and it's like I always tell my friends it goes better than it does. Uh, I was like, holy fucking proof out there. Um, oh my goodness. This is where the other day I noticed if you watch all the Harry Potter movies back to back in order and really pay close attention, you're a fucking loser. <laughs> Oh, it's just gorgeous out tonight. Um, <laughs> New York is a weird place. I hurt my finger the other day, and I had to go to the emergency room, and the doctor looked at it, and he goes, man, Jamie, that is a bad fracture, but it could be worse. And I go, really? And he goes, yeah, you could be a magician. And I said, what do you mean? Because I wouldn't be able to, like, hold the tricks and stuff? And he goes, no, no, man. It would just fucking suck to be a magician, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'd be a... Oh, man. So, that's cool. You guys laugh so hard, I just I was able to get rid of one of my jokes. Uh, fuck, yeah, I hated that one. I've been doing it for 11 years. Um, so, I have a couple of kids back at the house, guys. Not in a weird way. I don't just have a couple of kids back at the house. That, that would be weird to admit that, you know? Um, but I do. I have two kids at home, and uh, sometimes people are like, Jamie, you have two kids. Do you have a favorite? Which is a ridiculous question, right? You know, obviously I do, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I would never say anything, you know, because it's weird because it's my neighbor's kid. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, this kid is so cute. I have a picture of him in my wallet. I used to live here. I, I used to live right in New York City, but it got too expensive for me. I had to live in a studio apartment. I don't know if everybody here knows what a studio apartment is. Basically, it's where you live in one room and you pretend like that's fucking okay. <laughs> that you... My friend came over, he's like, dude, here's your new apartment. Thought maybe you could show me around your place. Which I don't know if you guys have ever given a tour of a studio apartment. But it always goes the same way. You know, you're like, okay, and right here we have the... And then you just start crying because your life is shit. <laughs> My friend goes, Jamie, you should put up a mirror on the wall. A giant mirror, and it'll make it look bigger. So I tried it, guys. I put up a giant mirror on the wall, and then it looked like there were two guys living in shitty apartments. <laughs> Two failures in matching pajamas. <laughs> like, oh my God, that guy's trying to hang himself too. <laughs> I don't even know if I'm smart enough to live in New York. I remember I was here once and I was trying to do the New York Times crossword puzzle. <laughs> Holy shit. Sometimes I didn't even have to read like the whole clue to figure out I wasn't gonna fucking get it. <laughs> okay. It was, it was like, what Portuguese? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I know one Portuguese thing. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to get that one if you let me write the rest of the question. So I had these kids, right? And um, do you know there's, there's milestones you want your kid to hit when they're little? Like you want them to like crawl at a certain time and then you want, you want them to walk, that's important. But do you know there's this one I didn't know about that, that women usually know? Do you know the first milestone when they're a baby is you want them to like flip over, right? That's like a big thing when the baby flips over from front to back, that's a real thing. I didn't know that that was a thing, right? And my wife, when we had a baby, she goes, one day she goes, Jamie, get in here, the baby, Charlie, is about to flip over. And I, so I just, I just didn't even, didn't go in there. You know what I mean? I just didn't. Why would I go in there to see? So I just stayed watching TV. And then she comes in, and she seemed, she seemed, I, I don't want to use the word agitated because it's not strong enough. Uh, but she goes, you missed it. Charlie flipped over and you, you missed it. And I go, who gives a fuck? That's what I said without thinking. I said, who gives a fuck? And then she looked at me so angry. I said, no, 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 I mean like a cheer, like, who gives a fuck? I do, yeah. That's a real thing, you guys, to flip over. I remember my, my wife's friend was over once and they were all worried because she was like, oh man, Cindy is almost nine months old and she hasn't, she hasn't flipped over yet, you know? 
And I, I was like, yeah, I don't think it fucking matters. You know what I mean? I don't <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, but I don't think... I don't think it matters. And she was like, well, how do you know? And I go, no, I'm just saying, Cindy, you know, she might not be doing it now, but she'll be, she'll be fine. <laughs> she'll be fine. And, but she says to me, and she goes, well, how do you know you're not a doctor? And I go, well, here's how I know. Uh, all of us in this room, you know, we don't, like, know someone at work that can't fucking flip over. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like, we all learn to, to do it. You don't, like, go to the beach and there's a guy like, I can't flip over! I never... I never learned to do this, guys. I never... Help, I'm burning on the one side. <laughs> it's weird having a little girl, too, because there's going to be talks we're going to have to have and stuff. There's boys are going to come over. She's going to get, you know, tits or whatever. And uh, <laughs> you're not supposed I probably won't use the word tits, you know, but it's... Uh, but what I thought was I was thinking a great idea would be to just teach my daughter to give the best hand job in the no. world. And... Uh, <laughs> Well, no, like, I wouldn't teach... Hold on, hear me out here, guys. I think you should just give me a second on this one. Uh, well, all I'm saying is a hand job. Think of all the good things that come from a hand job, okay? There's no, there's no baby. That's why they call that a happy ending, because there's no baby. And there's no diseases. Okay. Listen, guys, I'm just saying that I don't want my daughter to end up on one of those MTV shows, you know what I mean? There's no MTV show called 16 with cum on my hand, you know what I mean? There's no... Right? Oh, you know what? It's cool, it's live, because I couldn't even edit that out if they want. Um, it was weird. I was in Alabama a, a few weeks ago, and uh, is anybody from there? Because I'll change it. Um, it was a wonderful place, though, but after the show, this one gay came up to me, he was like, uh, he was like, hey, man, you know, I never heard of a studio apartment until you mentioned it. We talked for a little while, and he asked me how much I paid, and I told him, and he was like, dude, you're a fucking idiot. That's what he told me. <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? And he goes, do you realize for that much money here in Alabama, you could literally live in a 10-bedroom house on about 100 acres of land? And I was like, I know, man, but the only problem is, out the front door, Alabama is there. <laughs> My name's Jamie Lister. You guys have been so much fun. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Zainab Johnson is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Your next comic, you know her from Last Comic Standing. Give it up for Zainab Johnson. Let her hear it. You stared at me like you didn't know what was going to happen. Are you okay? She's like, is it really? It's me. You want to? Yeah, you just made me feel famous. <laughs> hey. So, I appreciate that. <laughs> I, uh, they say black people are always late. Who says it, sir? You do. Yeah. It was my New Year's resolution. I was like, I hate when they say black people are late. I'm not going to be late anymore, right? But the thing is, when you show up on time, you notice when everybody else is late. Like, my one homegirl, she's disrespectfully late. Like, I try and trick her. The show starts at 8. I'm like, it starts at 7.30. She still gets there at 9.45. <laughs> Disrespectful. We got into an argument. I said, you don't have any integrity. She says, Zainab, you don't get it. The reason why I'm always late is because I need time to do my hair. Okay, hair joke. <laughs> Thing is, her hair never looks good. <laughs> so now every time she walks in late, I'm like, you could have been on time. <laughs> I'm from New York. I'm so happy to be home. Uh, yes. I live in L.A. 
I live in LA and I live in an area called uh, Hollywood and Highland. Somebody told me, oh wow, you're from New York. You live in Hollywood and Highland. That must be just like Times Square. No, it's not. <laughs> Times Square, you see people going to work, coming from work, handling business. Hollywood and Highland, I walk out my door, I see the same homeless woman shitting in front of Starbucks. <laughs> Every single day, I think that's the way she communicates. And I'm a little bit envious, because every time I see her, I'm like, how are you getting so much waste? <laughs> I have to drink a kale smoothie every morning. But you, seemingly with nothing, <laughs> are shitting effortlessly. What? <laughs> how, is that, how is that possible? I'm happy to be home. I'm happy to be home because I see some of my family in the audience. It's actually 13 of us. Yes, I have seven brothers, five sisters, all from the same mother and father. <laughs> my mother's crazy. She's crazy. I brag about it though. Like I feel like that's the thing that makes me special. You know, like I grew up in New York at times we ain't have shit. So I feel like whenever I was losing, that was like my go-to win. Like kids would come up to me in school and be like, Zainab, Zainab, did you get an A on the test? I'd be like, no, but I know my father. <laughs> I come from a two-parent home, what are the odds? <laughs> when I play sports, if ever I lost, the other team would be like, we won, we won, that's why we won. I'd be like, you won today, but who's winning the custody battle between your parents? <laughs> you might have to change school districts. <laughs> be married. I want to be married. I really want to be married. I think marriage is great. I came from parents that are married, grandparents that are married. I feel the pressure, though, to marry a black guy. Besides the obvious reasons, like I'm black. <laughs> but of, of 13 of us, six are married. Of those six, nobody has married a black person, not one. Like, we were so happy when my brother started dating a black girl, we didn't care he was cheating on his wife. <laughs> I found out later she was Dominican. I was like, we'll take it, that's close. That's close. It's so interesting though, like we're so, we're so different. It's, it's so interesting to see 13 people grow up in the same house and be so different. Like my sister, she's older, she's older than me, but she's always been like bougie. You know, like, like extra bougie. She just married this, uh, you know, a uh, uh, British guy from, from the UK, older with a little bit of money, you know? And like people, she's in the audience, she just said a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Just to prove her bougie <laughs> So she has all these like designer items and people always say, wow, you know, you have all these nice things. What do you do for a living? She responds, I'm married. <laughs> And like, I'm her sister, I know I should root for her, but every time she says it, I'm just thinking, bitch. <laughs> Such a fucking bitch. My younger brother, he's complete opposite. He, uh, hood boy from New York. Could do anything he wants in the world, but he likes the hood. He likes to be like hood relevant, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> he likes to say this thing, he says that with anything he doesn't like, he's like, that shit is trash. <laughs> Everything, like, he hates, he hates the fact that I have a shaved head. He won't even FaceTime me. <laughs> he hates it. He says, every time he sees me, he says, Zainab, man, that shaved head, that shit trash. That, that shit. But he says it like he cares about that shit trash. And he always follows it with, that's a fact. Like, <laughs> It, like, it's not my opinion, I, you know, he says it like, Wikipedia, check it, like... It's, it's, it's. He says, Zaynab, what are you doing? I said, I'm in my car. He said, drive down to the city dump and stick your head in, because that shit is trash. <laughs> That's your fact. <laughs> he says it about anything, though. He can see a pretty girl he likes. Yo, I'm trying to take you out. No, I'm good. Oh, she trash. <laughs> That's your fact. Like, he got, like, <laughs> like he got to tell all the guys that's going to try and holler at her, nah, she trash, that's a fact. <laughs> she be wearing lip gloss, like she trash. <laughs> <She> fa <laughs> 
anything, anything. I'm like, yo, Ab, you want a banana? Nah, bananas is trash. They got too much potassium, that's your fat. <laughs> My little sister, she had a baby. We go to see the baby. Newborn baby, we're saying everything you say about a newborn baby, right? Oh, the baby's cute. Oh, wow, he looks like you. Oh my God, you pushed out a nine pound baby? My little brother walks in the room. Oh, that baby trash. <laughs> That's your fact. <laughs> he pointed at it like it was a crime scene. That's your fact. <laughs> I said, you can't call a baby trash. He said, man, he trash, it's Pop's trash. That baby trash. <laughs> That's your fact. <laughs> He was the first person that had the baby's uh, picture screen saved in his phone. I said, I thought you said the baby was trash. He was like, that's my nigga though. <laughs> it's the most inappropriate baby conversation I've ever heard. He hit me on uh, Facebook the other day and I wish that it was a private message, but it was on my wall. <laughs> and it, it, it read, uh, Zainab, grow your fucking hair back. <laughs> you got people thinking something is wrong with you. For real, grow your shit back. <laughs> and like I said, he's hood, you know, like just unnecessary, like, like I kill your mother, eat your kids. Like just, <laughs> just scary, right? So I'm imagining him typing it very aggressively, like Zainab, grow your fucking hair back. You got, I don't know why I feel like hood boys can only type with one finger. <laughs> Y-O, where the fuck is the U? Where the fuck is the U? That shit trash. I'm Zainab, y'all. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, John Hunt is taking the stage when we return. of the Full Count Podcast. Give it up for John Hook. How is everybody? Ah, oh, that's nice. You seem like a great crowd. Let me leave you with this. I was driving the other day. I saw a bumper sticker. It said, give kids hugs, not drugs. My first thought was, yeah, that's a good idea. My immediate follow-up thought was, I'm probably getting the same amount of prison time for doing either one of those things. <laughs> I feel like I'd be better off going to a crowded playground and just throwing out fistfuls of crack rock like birdseed, <laughs> rather than showing up like, hey, who wants a hug? Come on, give me a hug! What's that, officer? No, I don't have children of my own. I saw a bumper sticker and I do what signs tell me. I'm an idiot. Sorry if I seem tired. I've not been getting the proper amount of sleep lately. Where I live, the communal washer and dryer to my entire apartment complex backs up to my living room wall. Right, right, so I can hear people doing laundry all hours of the night and day. Which is not a big deal, as long as people are washing human laundry. Shirts, pants, socks, stuff like that. Got a new neighbor who doesn't understand that. Every other day, she's like, what? It's 3.30 in the morning. This is a perfect time to wash a load of zippers, nickels, and drill bits. <laughs> what are you doing down there, lady? Drying a robot? What's happening? Oh, no, no, no. It's just my belt buckle collection. I've only got two more loads, spark plugs and old bike pedals. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thought I was doing okay in the looks department, but uh, ladies have spoken loud and clear and that is not right. <laughs> was out at a bar minding my own business, watching the TV, noticed two women on the other side of the bar staring at me burning a hole in me. So I was like, I should go talk to these ladies because I think that's how society works. I have no idea, really. I don't get out a lot. So I casually walk up to these ladies and as smooth as I could introduce myself. Hi, I'm John. Couldn't help but notice you were looking at me from the, studying me from afar, you know? And this one girl cuts me off. She goes, uh, yeah. 
Because if anything weird happens to me or my friend here, I won't be able to describe you to the police later. Okay, uh, have a nice evening. I'm gonna go back to my seat. Walking home that same night, head down, super bummed out about how that went. Guy I don't know on the other side of the street yells out at me, hey, that beard makes you look like a racist. <laughs> what? I said, excuse me? He goes, you heard me, man. That beard makes you look like a racist. And I stopped, I was like, I was mad. I was like, first of all, sir, it is 2014. That is a small-minded, ignorant thing to say to someone. And secondly, I think the word you're looking for is rapist. <laughs> It's a P, moron. It's a P. <laughs> Ignorance is everywhere, though, guys. You can't, uh, you can't learn everyone all at once, anyway. I don't think I'm going to have children. I don't think that's in the uh, cards. Not because I'm anti-kid or I hate kids or anything, but uh, I'm actually afraid of dad anger. Um, in case you don't know, dad anger is a disease that affects 99.9% .9 of all men with children. <laughs> And uh, I've seen it firsthand, and I don't want it personally. <clears throat> I remember being seven years old, looking into the kitchen of the house I grew up in, and I could see my dad in there. He was getting into a fight, a physical altercation <clears throat> with a piece of individually wrapped American cheese. <laughs> and it was just getting worse and worse. He was like, oh, fucking cheese, god, god damn it, cheese, god, cheese. He rips it in half, throws it on the ground, storms out of the kitchen. I'm seven, I'm like, oh my God, he hates cheese. I don't wanna be an adult if I can't love cheese. That looks awful. As I got older though, I realized that wasn't about cheese at all. That piece of cheese represented my father's dreams. <laughs> and his hands represented what me and my brother had done to them. Could have been a National Geographic photographer, fucking kids. <laughs> and I want to love cheese forever, so I'm not going to have children. <laughs> it's a math problem. <laughs> I, uh, I like baseball. I watch a lot of baseball. You guys like baseball? <laughs> All right. It's a better response than I usually get. Uh, no, I like baseball. I watch a lot of the Major League Baseball Network which is a channel that talks about baseball 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And it's really exciting when the baseball season is happening, right? <laughs> but in the off season, it takes a little bit of a dip in the action. I was watching it one day, like four months before spring training, <clears throat> and these two guys on there, I felt bad for them. They were like out of topics, right? One guy was like, hey, wh where, where'd you go to school again? Like they weren't even, like nothing, <laughs> what? Like wh what's your wife's maiden name? Like what kind of car do you drive? It, nothing to do with baseball. And I felt like you could sense a producer off camera, like, come on, guys, baseball, baseball, baseball. And one guy was like, oh, yeah, 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 baseball. And he just pulls a topic out of thin air, and he says, hey, what if the players from back in the day were to come back now and see the way the game is played? And the other guy's like, oh, my God, a topic. Awesome. <laughs> and his quote, <clears throat> his quote was, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, if Babe Ruth came back today, the first thing he'd say is, wow, look at the velocity on these pitches. And I'm sitting at home like, I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't claim to know Babe Ruth. I don't claim to come from the time of Babe Ruth. But I've seen some documentaries and I've read a couple of history books. And I think if Babe Ruth came back today, see the way the game is played now, one of the first things he might say is, holy shit, there's a lot of black people playing this game. <laughs> followed closely by, why are my powers useless against them? <laughs> Somebody give me a Cuban cigar. What? It's turned to a trade embargo joke at the end, guys. It's uh, literally the highest proud thing I'll say <clears throat> all night. My brother's an idiot. Um, he doesn't have a TV, don't worry, we can talk about him. He doesn't think before he speaks. He's only a few years younger than me. He does not think before he speaks. I was out at a bar, minding my own business, eating dinner by myself, because I'm super popular. 
And I turn to my right, and like four tables away is Weird Al eating dinner with his wife like a human being. <laughs> and I freak out. I'm like, oh my God, I love Weird Al. Oh, I was like, I really influenced me as a kid. I thought Weird Al was fantastic. My brother loved Weird Al. So I get away from the table. I don't want to freak out next to him. So I get away from the table. I call my brother. I say, hey man, <clears throat> you got to get down here. Weird Al is here. To which he responds with, huh? Yankovic or Pacino? Yeah, dude, Weird Al Pacino is down here. <laughs> he's got an accordion, and uh, he's shouting out lines to send of a woman in Scarface. <laughs> You're the first person I called. <laughs> Click. Guys, I'm John Huck. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the rest of the show. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Mike Yarn is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. All right, you guys know your next comic from inside Amy Schumer on Comedy Central. Give it up for Mike Yard. Let him hear it. Hey, what's up? All right, that was kind of whack. Hey. Thank you. 40,000 people in here, but you're the only one. I appreciate that. I don't blame y'all. I don't want to be here either. I really don't. If I didn't really need this $25, I would not fucking... What are you going to do, right? Netflix ain't going to pay itself. Got to fucking, gotta fucking get that Netflix money. I'm lying. I love I love doing this job, man. I love doing comedy. I can't do anything else. I, t I tried to have a job. I did. I, I used to have a regular. Why are you laughing? I did. I did. I used to have a regular job. I was in the Matrix, but I had to get the fuck out. Cause the Matrix is scary, yo. You know what it is? It's too many rules when you got a job. Like I can't. I'm not a rule person. You got to know who you are. There's no rules to comedy. That's why I love doing this. No fucking rule. None. The only rule is be funny, that's it. And you don't even have to do that sometimes. <laughs> There's a lot of times where you look at the audience like, my bad, I thought this shit. <laughs> shit was hilarious when I wrote it. <laughs> it's the only rule of comedy. There's no drug test at this job, none. <laughs> none. You hear me? I could have shot dope right before I came up here. I could have been in the hallway. <laughs> could have came on this stage. Y'all wouldn't give a damn as long as I was funny. That's all you want. That's what you paid your money for. I could have came on this stage and be like, yo, so I was on the subway. <laughs> I'd be like, that heroin addict was hilarious. The way he kept nodding out in between jokes was suspenseful. I can't do it, man. It's too many damn rules. Like most jobs, you gotta be there, what? Like eight, nine o'clock in the morning, right? Eight, now like, why, why, why? <laughs> why, I'm not gonna work at eight o'clock, so why the fuck am I here, right? <laughs> I could've had my coffee and bagel at home. You just, you just making me uncomfortable while I eat my breakfast. Cause I'ma eat regardless, fuck this job. Eight, nine, that's too, too early. And then they want you there for eight hours, minimum. That more, most people do more than that, but minimum eight hours. Like what, what, eight hours, what the fuck? <laughs> like what are, what are we doing here that gotta, gotta take eight hours to finish? Like what are we saving the world here at Staples? What the fuck is really going on? <laughs> eight hours, that's too much time, that's too much time. There is nothing in my life that I wanna do for eight hours in a row. You know how long my work day is doing comedy? 10 minutes. <laughs> Eight hours is ridiculous, y'all. That is one third of my day, right? Let's do math. I think I'm right. Any Asians in here? Ain't one third? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Did I just disrespect the Asians by saying they were smart at math? My bad. <laughs> Eight hours is one third of my day. That's one third of my day that I have to spend around people I don't really, I don't really fucking like that much. Because let's be real, everybody in this room has at least one person at your job that you look at every day. And you're like, when are they going to fire this motherfucker? <laughs> Am I lying? 
Okay. And if you're not laughing, you're that person. They don't like you there. They don't like you. You did it to yourself. I didn't do it. It's too much time, man. It's too much time to dedicate to one thing. Let me give you a, a better example why that's too much time. Right? I got a son, and I love my son to death, man. I would die for my son. That's how much I love him. If, we, if I'm in a situation where somebody got a pistol to both of us, and they're like, one of you guys got to die, and the other one gets to live, then you got to kill me. It's not a discussion. That's how much I love my son. You got you to gotta kill me so he can live, right? But I have never spent eight hours in a row <laughs> with that little motherfucker. Okay, let me tell you something. After about 45 minutes, I'm like, yo, don't you got Xboxes and shit you need to go play? Like, why are you hanging out with me, yo? Go do young shit. Like, I can run for no reason. Get out of here. I feel like some people judge me when I call my son a motherfucker. That's because you don't know him. Look, people always take his side because he's a kid, but my son is an asshole. Like, I love my son. Like I said, I would literally die for my son, but he's an asshole, all right? Okay, li okay, listen to me. Everybody in this room has had a conversation with somebody, and when that person walk away, you're like, what a fucking asshole. <laughs> okay, that person had parents. I happen to be the parent of an asshole. And I've come to terms with that. Okay, let me tell you why I call my son an asshole. This is, this is the most recent thing that he's done, right? My son uh, just started uh, high school this year, right? So his first, first week into the school year, my son decided he just wasn't gonna go anymore, <laughs> right? We didn't have a meeting or anything. He just made an executive decision, like, yo, I'm not really feeling this shit, I'm not going back. <laughs> and, and he's an idiot, because he knows all his teachers, any school my son has ever been to, I go there, I meet all the teachers, I give them my number, they give me their number. He knows this, but he decided he wasn't gonna go, right? So the school calls, and, and you know, they're like, hey, listen, man, you know, we're a little concerned. You know, Michael hasn't been here in a couple of days, we're just making sure he's okay. I'm like, well, uh, he left here uh, with a book bag on. I thought he was with you, motherfucker. You mean, you mean to tell me none of us don't know where this little fuckers are? And then he comes home from school on time, mind you. My son is a math genius. He comes home exactly when he's supposed to come home, all dramatic, dropping his bag. Oh, what a day. And I'm sitting there like, really? So I go, you know what, I'm, let me see how far he gonna take this. So I go, hey, listen, how was school today? He goes, it was good, you know, a little rough, but it was good. I'm like, so, so, so you're gonna go with that? <laughs> he goes, yeah, what happened? I said, how was school today? He goes, it was great, you know, like I said, a little tough. It takes some getting used to, but as a <laughs> high school is different, but you know, it was okay. I'm like, so you just, you just gonna up it a notch? <laughs> You, fu you fucking asshole. He said, why? What happened? I said, they fucking called. Why do you think I asked you twice? I heard you the first time, but I wanted to give you a dumbass an opportunity to take it back. But you went further from it was good to it was great. I'm like, what the fuck? And it pissed me off, because I told my son a long time ago, I said, listen, man, because when I was a kid, I, when I was in high school, I had to work. You know, we didn't have money like that. So I had to work and help out in the household. He don't got to do that. I said, your, right now, your education is the most important thing in your life, and you're not going to school is unacceptable. As long as I'm your father, that's not happening. So I said, since you can't find a school, I'm going to take you to school every day, because I know exactly where it is. <laughs> And he got excited. He's like, oh, I get a ride to school. I'm gonna take the subway. You know, it's New York City. You gotta take the subway to school. He got a little excited, but he forgot in his excitement that I was a comedian. So what I did was, <laughs> this is exactly what I did. What I did was the first day I took him to school, I dropped him off in front of the school. I don't play that side of the school shit. I'm not saving face for you. I'm pulling up right in front of the school and I got a piece of shit car. It's loud. <laughs> It's all kind of, back, 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 back. So I pull up right in front of the school. Now, if you know anything about New York City Public High School, in the morning, it's like thousands of kids filing in, right? I got metal detectors, so it gets backed up. There's a bunch of kids in front of the school. So I pull up in front of the school, my son gets out the car, and as he gets halfway to the school, I just yelled out the car window, who loves you, Michael Yard? He was like, what are you doing, Dad? I was like, Daddy loves you, Michael Yard! And then I threw one of these at him. Yeah, he was mad. He was mad. He came home the next, he came home after school all upset. He's like, why would you do that to me? I was like, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> so the next day I took him to school, right? I pull up in front of the school. And as he gets out the car, he gets halfway to the school. He just turned around. He had the saddest look on his face like, daddy, please don't. 
I was like, nah, you good, you good. So as soon as he turned around, I jumped out the car with my T-shirt tied up in a bun. A fake belly button ring. I was, <laughs> I was looking extra sexy and I just ran up to him. You forgot to give daddy a hug. Daddy loves you. So does your other daddy. Uh, you guys have been amazing. I'm Mike Yard. Thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Yeah! You guys, you guys have been phenomenal tonight. As, as like Jamie said earlier, it's just, it's so much better when there's, there's people. <laughs> it really is. It's, uh, I remember one of my first shows in Los Angeles. I did a show for one guy. <laughs> Why? I'm like, I was mad that he fucking stayed. I'm like, what do you want? Just go, man. It's not even a show. It's a fucking conversation, except I'm louder. It's just weird. All right, all right we're going to bring up the comics that you saw tonight. Come on, guys. For Jamie Lisso, Zainab Johnson, John Huck, and Mike Yard. Let him hear. 